Welcome back to Why Blank Lost. I'm David Bloomberg, and much like the immunity challenge, this podcast just got a lot harder with two balls. <laughs> I'm just going to be so good today, and this is how I'm starting. Uh, I you have yeah. a problem with me starting by talking about two balls? I, no, not at all. I, 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 I think it's fabulous that you were just juggling your two balls. That's yes. great for you. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. It's a great podcast. <laughs> you and your props. Yes, yes. Uh, now, of course, there was also a reward challenge, which turned out to be my co-host Jessica Lewis's favorite challenge ever. Yeah, really, never, never my favorite, ever. But thanks for reminding all of the listeners of that. Horrifying, just horrifying. But I feel like Jeff took it a little easier on this. Oh, 100%. Players. Yeah, so maybe he listened to my struggles and my almost drowning in sand and dying and the rest of my castmates doing the same and said, you know what? Let's give them a, a little bit of an easier time with this one. Well, I mean, we had a discussion previously about it looked like they could move their hands more than when you did it. And this mm -hmm. time I definitely noticed that I was looking. For oh, it. yeah. And at one point to me, it looked like Andy had managed to maneuver his hands like almost in front of him somehow. Yes. Like that's and also he was they had. He was licking the ball. So but he wasn't that. he wasn't licking it. He was biting it as a creative way to get it over the hump. I still think that it is a horrible challenge to make anybody go through. It's just awful. But I will say, and I've said this before, Jeff was very proud of himself for managing to figure out a challenge where everyone had to be tied at their hands and feet. Mm -hmm. He was very, very proud of himself. And I still have scars from the constraints or restraints, whatever you want to call them that we're on. Yeah. So it's, it's not fun. Not fun. I don't mm -hmm. think they should do it anymore. That's just I, my humble I, opinion. I do still have a video in my draft. It is. Stop it. No, it is. It is uh, in my mm -hmm. TikTok draft. Nope. And it's the super cut I made of you in in this challenge. I know you probably shouldn't share that with the world again because. Uh, well, what do you mean again? I never did it last time. I thought you did. I no, swear I, you put I, that out. I, I asked for your permission and then I never did it. But oh, it, it was back I in see. May of last year, 2023. Well, listen. That is the only challenge I had to have something of myself blurred out. Okay. That's how horrifying that challenge was. So, oh goodness. The world does not need to see that again. I, I, I mean, are you sure? Because, you know, I've got Oh, it. no, uh, don't. I've, 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 oh, yeah, I'm no. glad the glare. Oh, you can't see yes. it at all. It's oh. fantastic. All right. I guess we'll have to have a chat offline about whether I'm allowed <laughs> to post it or not. Listen, it's not like people can't find the damn thing, but it is. I know, but the super cut that awful. I made, it just focuses on the most <laughs> important person. Oh, it was awful. And I will say, I said I can't, but it's not because I can't do that. That was like literally like I was drowning. I, I had so much sand up my nose and in my mouth. I was like, I can't breathe. I'm dying and nobody cared. So yeah. this is a very dangerous game. Just want you to all know that. <laughs> and you want to know, I'll just say this too, because someone actually asked me this. They were like, well, but if you were to actually like be seriously injured or like even die, if you were playing Survivor, like, I mean, you can... You can like sue them. And I'm like, no, you you can't. You sign that away. You like, you're like, I understand I could die. Like, that's literally in the contract you sign. Like, I, I mean, get it. Yes, but you're a lawyer. You know, I you know. can't Listen, sign away. Uh, I understand. You know, everything. There's a lot of things you could still do regardless right. of what you sign. But I, but they try to take steps to avoid that well, from happening by going, just so you know, by the way, this warning here, well, you could die. Hopefully they try to take steps to prevent you from dying too. You know, they do. They definitely yeah. do. They're very kind in that regard as well. Mm -hmm. But in the process, things happen like you almost drown sucking in sand through your nose and your mouth. And what mm -hmm. do you do at that point? Anyway, this yeah. isn't about me. This is about no, Gabe, right? It's not. And yeah, this is about Gabe, um, which is the first time we've mentioned his name and we're five yes. minutes in. Uh, but yeah, as I was watching the show this week, 
I noticed at one point that Gay was talking about how he's going to make it to final eight. And it just instantly gave me a Rome flashback. Mm. And, you know, people can check my blue sky live skeeting to prove it. You can find it still in there. Um, obviously, it wasn't at all near the same level as Rome. But some of that extreme confidence was there. And I, I felt like they showed it for a reason. Mm. Turned out I was right. But the question we're here oh, to answer yeah. is why and we yeah. will figure it out by following our usual path to compare gabe's game to my rules for winning i originally wrote way back after season one and have been updating ever since using all the non-spoiler information available to us from what we saw on tv interviews social media and secret scenes mm -hmm. and the newest version of the rules can of course be found at rob has a website.com slash yx lost feed uh but before we address how gabe did in terms of the rules and after we talk about balls and sand worms and stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, we always have some other things to discuss from the episode. And this week I wanted to start with Andy. And oh, as a, Andy. As a matter of fact, it's almost all Andy. Um, <laughs> because I feel like he has just grown so much as a player and a character in the game. Yes. And he uh, is the type of person that you do not keep in the beginning because this is what happens. People I, who are I, watching. I said it, uh, was it last week or two weeks ago? I, I think it was two weeks ago. I said, Andy is going to change the way people treat players like Andy and Banu and yes. Emily and others yes. in the past, in the future. This They're is, going this to is be a like, theme that we are seeing. Right. Yes. They're going to be like, no, we're not keeping them around and trying to mold them. We're getting rid of them now. Yeah. I, it um, is it is astonishing to me how he has been able to maintain still that mindset in so many of the people who he's playing the game with mm -hmm. that it's still just Andy. It's still yeah. just and Andy's leaning into it so oh, hard, yes. so hard. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but in the meantime, behind the scenes, in just this episode, we heard from him that he built a web of different alliances. Mm -hmm. So, you know, from that, I would compare him to Brian Heideck. I, I, the game, not personally. Um, and he was using the pendulum strategy. Mm. So I'd compare him to Will Wall. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has found or placed himself in the middle of everything with different options. Uh, Genevieve talks to him. Sam talks to him. Kyle trusts him. He tells Teeny they're his number one, etc. He wants to play people off against each other, like telling Rachel that Genevieve is coming for her and you know, remaking but an he alliance with Rachel. Such, he does it in such an interesting way because yes. she's she's asking about, she's like, so what do you think about Genevieve? I think she's the one who brought it up. And then mm -hmm. he just kind of says it in such a nonchalant, like mm -hmm. non-threatening kind of way. And, and he does it by complimenting Rachel at the same time. It's not like, oh, well, Genevieve says you need to be voted out. That's not what he says. Oh, Genevieve like actually was like, so I can't remember exactly what he said about Genevieve saying this about Rachel, but it was just incredible the way that he did it because it was just so non-threatening and just yeah. so like water cooler talk, you know, that like, oh yeah, no, this is what I, you know, this is what she said. And Rachel was like, oh. you know, yeah. and so I just, he's so non-threatening in everything that he does. Nobody reads into it and thinks that he's trying to stir the pot at all. Right. Right. He thinks that people just see charming Andy, uh, but mm -hmm. he feels that he's lethal. Yes. Um, now, I do want to mention that at least one part of the Andy segment was apparently not as it seemed. Um, in fact, it was a, seemingly the opposite. Uh, we saw Andy talking to Sue and trying to get her as one of his allies. And in the scene, it made it look like, oh, now with Sue, Sue's on board with him. Mm. But Gabe told Gordon Holmes that Andy actually described that as his worst survivor discussion. Uh, oh. <laughs> because Andy tried to get Sue to turn on Gabe and she was like, screw you. Uh, and uh, then Gabe said, possibly quoting Andy, I wasn't sure when he was saying this. He said that if Gabe was Sue's island son and Caroline was Sue's island daughter, then Andy was Sue's island neighbor kid who she didn't really like. <laughs> Yeah, and well, and I do think though that there is 
something to be said about him making the attempt. I think it is interesting that it didn't, we, we weren't provided all of the information mm -hmm. regarding that particular conversation. Yeah, that because that was it, clearly meant to be a, look how great Andy is doing segment. Right, so. exactly, exactly. And unfortunately for Sue, we just got a whole lot of, forget Kyle. I hate Kyle. I want to vote Kyle. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think the names. word was forget. <laughs> uh, I think it was a different uh, F word that was yeah. bleeped out. Yeah. Yes, it was, it was a little aggressive, but, but yes, yeah, so. She did post on the, on Twitter. Uh, to say, just to be clear, I have never and would never kill anyone. It was just in the context of the game. <laughs> so. Oh, uh, goodness. Yeah. Fascinating. Fascinating uh, stuff. Good yes. stuff. Uh, now, I do also want to mention something that Andy said in Tribal Council about how they want to defeat the big threats there on the battlefield before getting to final tribal council. Mm -hmm. And I really liked hearing this because it almost seemed like it was a direct response to the types of players who in the past have said truly terrible things like to be the best, you have to beat the best. And that means yeah, going no. to the end with the best. I yeah, want to no. face off against the, the biggest threats in the end. And, mm. and it's like, no, no, you, you don't stop that. Um, yeah. it, you beat the so-called best earlier. So you don't have to face them at the end. That, right. Right. Whenever you beat them, that's still beating them. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, for sure. like, like if you're, if you're in the football playoffs, you don't say, well, this team that we're playing is really good, but we only want to beat them if we can beat them in the Super Bowl. So let them beat us. Right. Now. No, you beat them before you <laughs> right. get there. You um, stop them from getting to the Super Bowl. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I won't comment further yet on how this might or might not apply to Gabe. I was just happy to hear a player voicing the truth. Yes. The other thing, too, that I, I think is very interesting, we were provided a little more clarity regarding Teeny finding out about yes. the whole Saul thing from Andy during Tribal Council because there, there were some questions mm -hmm. posed as to why did she vote for Saul and I understand why she did. She didn't want to be the lone wolf and vote for someone else, but she did have more information than we knew about until this episode. And we found that yeah. out as well. So, it, You know, it bugs me a little to have previously ons that provide new information. Yes. But I don't know how else we find that information out because clearly they didn't want to tell us at the time. They wanted to right. keep it a mystery at the time. So I, you know, as a viewer, you just have to remember to watch the previously on even if even if you've seen it mm -hmm. it's like huh i need to watch this to make sure right. that you know i know something about new this. yeah yeah right. well and plus this particular previously on really outlined what the episode was going to be about because it mm. started out with gabe doing his uh ray lewis touchdown dance mm -hmm. and i was like why would they show that <laughs> what does that have to do with anything previously on? Right. And then we found out, you know, because they were showing, oh, look, it's, you know, him drawing attention to himself. And then, mm -hmm. you know, they showed all the stuff about Genevieve and about Teeny. And so it was it pretty well laid out. This is right. how the episode is going to go. It is going to be one of these two people. Yeah. And I do think it's interesting that they were very much in the know that it was going to be one of those two people mm -hmm. and they had a discussion about that. So I do think that uh, this particular episode was a little bit different because I don't feel like the two that knew that they were the vote reacted mm -hmm. the way that people normally react when they know they're yeah. the vote. Like we've seen the scrambling and the panicking and the, Oh my gosh. And trying to change things up. Mm -hmm. That's not what was happening. So it was, yeah. it was a very interesting, calm, kind of situation that they were both walking into. Yeah. Now, the only other thing I really wanted to specifically mention was the trade for rice. When everyone pressured Sam to give up his mm. shot in the dark, even mm -hmm. though he didn't really want to do it. Uh, but, you know, he realized he was the only person standing in the way, which could put a target on him if he didn't do it. And, you know, people got angry. Um, and, 
you know, I know Rob has also pointed out that they can only use it a few more tribal councils anyway. So it's not that big a deal. Uh, not to mention that you can really only use it when you know you're the target or in a specialized situation like Rachel did. Uh, so mm -hmm. I do think it was a pretty good deal overall. But I was glad to see Sam at least pause and think it through. Right. And I was actually really surprised that Jeff went along with it because it took away one of their trinkets. Yes. And he talked about that on the uh, On Fire podcast. You know, mm -hmm. he talked about, ooh, in the moment I had to consider all these different things, you know. Right. Because mm -hmm. um, I was getting all ready to uh, post to Blue Sky about how he called it a negotiation. And then when they tried to negotiate with him, he said no. They're like, how I, about I might have tweeted yeah, that or, or skeeted you, it. I don't know yes, which one I did. You yes. did before he said yes. Um, yeah. But I was like, I, I had it all typed up. It's like, uh, Jeff, this is a negotiation, you know, and then uh, players. <clears throat> yeah. How about this? No. How about this? No. And then right. he, they actually found something he was willing to bite on. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I do think that this whole rice negotiation thing, I don't love it. I understand the idea behind it. But I just feel like if you are going to provide a rice negotiation, mm -hmm. it needs to actually be a negotiation. You can't say you got four of you. That's it. It's four. And the, someone's like, what about three? No, it's four. Mm -hmm. That's that's not that's a trade. That's just right. a trade. You're like, you can right. you can buy this bag of rice for four people stepping right. down. That's yeah. that's what you're doing. Yeah. So. All right. Well, did you have anything or anyone else you want to discuss before we get to the rules? No, I think we touched upon all of the things that I wanted to touch upon. Okay. Uh, well, there were, of course, some other things going on, and I will be putting uh, some of it in my YouTube shorts uh, at David Bloomberg TV. Uh, for example, I already posted a video of Saul in the jury. Oh, wait a second. I should um, reference that for just a minute. That was super surprising and enjoyable. So thank you for that, Saul. Yes. That was great. Um, and then, of course, I also posted about uh, Jeff talking about people's balls and uh, Sue uh, being a tiny bit upset with Kyle. Uh, but there's still more. And also a tiny bit dirty. Yes. <laughs> yes. She's very dirty. Yeah. I, maybe that's how people were wondering. I think you were one of them. How do you get your makeup I, to stay? Because she I never washes like, her face off. You know, maybe that's, that's it. That would be what's going on because I'm don't know. stunned. She wants her makeup I just, to they stay do these there. super close-ups and I'm like, yeah. someone please just, just right here. Just You got you got a little something yeah. right here. Just take care of that. Or, you know, nobody wants to tell her because they've seen what she does to those coconuts, you know, when she gets angry. And, it's fair. So... Yeah, I'm just letting her be, but it is it is rather funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, before we get to how Gabe did, we do want to mention the rules we're about to discuss come in a shorter and much more colorful form yes, they do. Uh, as a poster. Uh, go to robhaswebsite.com slash YX Lost Feed. Scroll down to the poster, click on it, order it. And you and I forgot to discuss Black Friday. We stuff. did forget. I knew there was but something else we were going to There discuss. is something else, but I think we definitely need to provide. I was trying to think of what, what do they usually like 20% off sales? That's what they usually do, right? When it's uh, I mean, it depends, Black Friday. Sure. Um, you know, uh, I, I don't remember how much we're selling them for. I'd have to ask the shipping department that. Oh, they're $20. Okay. Um, so, so do you... Well, okay. We will come up with a percentage <laughs> off and you can find it by going to robhaswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed, clicking on it, and by Black Friday, we will update that for you. Um, there you go. We got we will it. we also it post out. it on social media. Yes. So, so there, we'll have a little um, Black Friday yeah. special. So we need to have our own little uh, poster negotiation to figure <laughs> out. Because we don't want to end up making it, you know, uh, uh, cost more to ship than <laughs> actually. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, we'll figure it out. We'll definitely uh, yeah. sort it out. Right. Uh, now, there is also, you can get a poster on a t-shirt and you can mm -hmm. get the checklist on the t-shirt. Now, we have no control over those prices. That no, we is do the not. the RHAP store. Um, typically, the RHAP store does have a Black Friday deal, at least for patrons. Typically. I am not, mm -hmm. I am not in the know. I do not know at all about that. 
Um, it, you know, sometimes it's happened in the past. So keep an eye out for that. And if it does happen, or frankly, even if it doesn't, uh, you know, you can, you can go here and order uh, the shirts that way too. Order some good stuff. Yeah. So again, that's rapiswebsite.com slash YX lost feed. All right. Well, leading up to the vote, uh, Gabe said he felt the best he's ever felt in the game. And four Tukus could have made it to the final eight. Uh, adding, the fact that the fellow players around me have allowed this to happen is mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. But then his fellow players didn't allow it to happen. Uh, now, it may seem like it's obvious that Gabe was voted out because he was a threat. But it's almost never that simple. In part because there are lots of threats. So... Mm -hmm. What did he do or not do to make himself the primary target right now? At RHAP, we know Survivor, and we know why Gabe lost. Right. Now, I just mentioned that, of course, Gabe was a threat. And considering the way things were portrayed to us on the show, it would be silly to put off talking about that. So we might as well go out of order and discuss Rule 6 right off the bat. I love it uh, when it goes out of order. Yes. Uh, now, that rule, of course, warns against being too much of a threat. Mm -hmm. um, we knew Gabe was a big threat. His tribe mates knew Gabe was a big threat. Gabe knew Gabe was a big threat. Which was what made an Entertainment Weekly secret scene from last week so odd. Because in it, Gabe complained to Rachel that he didn't understand why people considered him to be a threat. Hmm. He said he hadn't even come close to winning a challenge, which then he won the very next one. Uh, right. He claimed he was on the bottom of Tuku coming into the merge, which was total BS, as we'll discuss in a few minutes. Uh, but then he also gave a confessional in there where he seemed similarly confused about why he was considered a threat. So it's it's not like he was just putting on a show for Rachel. Yeah, that would have been my initial thought on that. Right. But then, yes, the confessional throws that off. Yeah. Yeah. Now, based on something he told Mike Bloom, which we'll get to in a moment, I think he believed he was doing a better job of hiding his threat level. And that's why he was confused. Mm. But the facts are the facts. And everybody knew he was a threat yeah i mean i think maybe it's one of those situations where you're hoping to kind of figure it out because in his mind maybe he really was like god i don't know i don't know why everyone would think i'm such a threat mm -hmm. and maybe you're trying to work it through your own self and when you're having a confessional you have an opportunity to talk through things that you might right. not be able to talk through with anyone else because none of the players are going to be like oh yes this is why you're a threat it's all of these reasons and not that the producers are necessarily going to do that but it gives you an opportunity to just say things out loud mm -hmm. and sometimes just saying them out loud allows you to go huh well maybe that is what that was you know maybe uh -huh. that's why someone thinks that and so I'm curious if if that was part of his thinking was I just really need to kind of like air this out mm -hmm. to try to figure it out myself. Yeah, maybe. Um, but let's go through. Well, let's start by going through what a few different players were saying about him. Mm. Um, in this episode, Kyle brought it up to Sam and Rachel at the reward. When mm -hmm. even Kyle is bringing you up as a threat. Yeah. You know, you're a threat. Yeah. Um, Sam said people were sketched out by their being for Tuku and more specific to Gabe himself, quote, he's somebody who is a massive strategic force. And then later he said, Gabe is such a threat in this game because he is the leader of the Tuku. And we saw just last week how true that was when Genevieve. So Genevieve talked to Sue about going after Saul. But then she had to talk to Gabe to make sure he'd go along with it. Um, and then she said, uh, the reason Gabe is pivotal to this plan is because Gabe has the numbers behind him. All mm -hmm. of the two will listen to him. He is the one who will make this happen. So, like I said, just a couple minutes ago, when he claimed to Rachel that he was on the bottom of the two coups, that was BS and everybody knew it. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, now, indeed, Rachel even said when voting, 
you're the biggest threat out here and we'd be fools to not do this while we can. Mm. Which, by the way, they showed Rachel from the back holding it up and saying that as if it was going, if it could apply to both people. It couldn't apply. I mean, as soon as she said, I was like, well, she's obviously voting gig. Why are you? Right. You right. Know, nobody's saying that I, there were reasons to get rid of Genevieve, but people were not saying she is the biggest threat out here. Right. She was right. a threat. Yeah. Um, and, you know, then also, um, uh, I think, oh, uh, uh, his supposed tight ally, Caroline, uh, told Andy, if Gabe is in the final three, he wins. Mm. Yeah. Well, and I think part of the idea of, of his ability to kind of control the Tuku perhaps goes mm -hmm. back to those very early votes. A lot of discussions that we've had, people think pre-merge doesn't necessarily count that much. Mm -hmm. But when you're taking someone out like TK and Tiana then there is something to be said about how does a vote like that happen? How, how, how do you end up structuring it in a way that two very strong people end up being voted out so early in the game? And so I'm curious if that's where that kind of stemmed from as well, when this idea of him kind of controlling the Tuku and that being part of the, the processing to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, he did control it. You know, it was kind of like the people who said, uh, oh, Sam and Sierra look like a tight duo. And they were like, what? How can you say that? Right. It's like, well, because well, they're seeing it. And the it's same obvious. thing is here with Gabe. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, like, just look at the just look right. at the votes that have happened yeah. and, and who's getting voted out. Right. I think most people would scratch their head and go, oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, even Gabe himself told Genevieve he felt like his threat level was sky high. Uh, as you might say, you think, um, <laughs> yeah. but he didn't fully realize how high it was until after the game. Uh, I mentioned a few minutes ago how he thought he was doing a better job of hiding his threat level. And he talked to Mike Bloom about that. Now, obviously you should read or watch Mike's interview for all of his answers, but specifically here, he mentioned that Saul at one point warned him to chill out at tribal council because he was mm. saying such smart things. And, you know, at camp, he was, uh, he, he said, kind of a fun goofball, but he thinks he freaked people out by, like, changing personalities at tribal council and giving Jeff deep, thoughtful answers. And he thinks yep. that made people worried about what he might do if he were in a, a final tribal council. I know someone just like that. And his name is David Wright. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He'd walk into tribal council and suddenly you were like, who is this man? I, just the phenomenal things that would come out of his mouth during tribal council. He always had the perfect answer, the this deep thought, this it, just things that just made you pause mm -hmm. and wonder where did he just come from? Every tribal council. So yes, I know exactly what that feels like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now there is also another issue that Gabe himself brought up when he was talking to Dalton Ross. He noted that if you look at his tight allies, Sue and Caroline are not exactly the most threatening looking people. Mm -hmm. This um, is what I'm talking about. Boy, now TK and Tiana. Right. Uh, so anybody who was considering breaking them up, would naturally go for him. Uh, he said if he had one thing he'd do differently, he would find more intimidating looking allies. And it is a good point. You know, yeah. one issue was that the other players were worried about there being four Tuku still in the game and, you know, getting along with each other. Of mm -hmm. those four, Kyle wasn't an option. And Gabe stood out compared to the other two. Sure. Yeah, well, and this is why Kyle was so hesitant to vote Gabe out because mm -hmm. he knows, well, then I'm next because then everyone's yeah. going to be looking at me. My my shield will be gone. And he still opted to vote out Gabe. So, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I don't know that he had much choice at that point, but mm -hmm. um, but some on one of Rob's podcasts, I don't remember if it was Rob or, or one of the guests, um, said 
you know, earlier, right, right around, I think, uh, the beginning of the merge, I, I think it was Tiana said something like, well, or to Caroline, yes, they might be coming for, uh, for Tuku, but they're not coming for me or you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Very fair point. And then look what happened. Right. Right. All right. Well, we can now move back to the top and talk about the first and generally most important rule, which is, of course, to scheme and plot. Now, Gabe obviously knew how important this was and even had a confessional a few weeks back where he talked about using players as tools and game pieces and the like. He had a plan going in that he put to work within hours as he wanted to get in good with an older person and immediately pulled 45-year-old suicide to make her his number one. Uh, from that point, she never wavered from him. No, she didn't. And he talked about how they rarely even had to check in because that was how steadfast her loyalty was. Mm -hmm. Um, and this was one reason TK and Tiana never realized the two of them were tight Mm because they weren't running off into the jungle talking to each other. They didn't need to check in. She was with them a hundred percent. Which is such an incredible thing to develop so quickly and to put so much faith into mm-hmm. another person because we talk about this all the time, the check-ins and how mm-hmm. significant and important And we will that. again in a minute, but yes. Yes, because that, that was something he did not continue mm-hmm. to do well. But I think that that definitely speaks volumes of how important those initial conversations can be right off the rip. Because it moves so fast and the game is immediate. As soon as you step on that beach, people are already trying to create bonds. They're already trying to create connections. And I think this is such a great example of how not only quickly they can form, but how strong they can be. Sue was definitely wherever Gabe went, Sue went. And that was that. So I I really think that 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 was incredible that they were able to do that so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something that's in in right near the top of rule one. It says from the very beginning, you have to start making alliances and cementing relationships. And I do mean the very beginning, Mm -hmm. you know, that is underlined there. And so, yeah, it's a situation where it's, you know, he showed it perfectly that, yeah, when we say the beginning, we mean like now, now, now. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because if you're not quick, you're going to miss out. Right. And I think it's interesting that he ended up mentioning as well, though, that he, because he developed such a quick relationship with Sue, he then developed a quick relationship with Caroline. And then it, and you already mentioned needing more intimidating looking like alliance partners. So I, I think he was potentially rethinking that choice even though Mm -hmm. it certainly worked well for him at the beginning of the game for sure right right and uh, so to continue from back then um you know sue connected with caroline who said sue was the main person she wanted to work with now even at that time i said it appeared caroline was more tightly connected with sue and would be more likely to turn on gabe Because remember, she was skeptical of him until he showed her his immunity idol, and then she was on board. Mm -hmm. But I can't even really take credit for saying that, because what we didn't see was the further ongoing conversations he described in interviews that the two of them had together, where they would talk like intense strategy for hours and became very close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, But that's part of editing, I guess, too, right? So. Right. And he even said that he was like, Hey, I understand why it wasn't shown. We only went to tribal council once. Right. Uh, So, Mm -hmm. you know, um, now one interesting thing to me about his relationship with Caroline was, you know, we, we just talked about needing to check in and how he didn't with Sue, but he did need to check in with Caroline. Mm-hmm. It's it's something we've discussed many times before, including just two weeks ago when Sierra kind of forgot to do it with Andy as much as she yeah. should have. Mm-hmm. Um, and something similar happened to Gabe. He told Dalton Ross that early in the game, he was constantly checking in with Caroline and involving her in his plans to the point that he knew about um, she knew about them before anyone else. 
But much like with Sierra, they got to the merge. Quote, that time of coming up with a plan and telling Caroline about it got longer and longer and longer. And then when he discussed uh, this week the the possibility of voting out Genevieve, he, he talked to various people. It got back to Caroline before he told her himself. Mm-hmm. And as he said, from Caroline's perspective, she was like, dude, I have three other people telling me that you want to vote out Genevieve before you tell me that, that you want to mm-hmm. vote out Genevieve. So what's going on here? Am I not part of your plans anymore? Do you not see me as a peer the way you did early in the game? Now, was it the main reason Gabe was voted out? Probably not. Did it contribute to her thinking about getting rid of him? Almost certainly. Yes. Oh, I'm sure that it did because you start to question how significant you are to that person's game Mm -hmm. moving forward. And if you are not part of that person's moves to get to the end, then hmm, maybe this person doesn't really have my best interests. Even though he was telling her, we're final three, we're final three. Right. Actions speak louder than words, right? And if you are not feeling or making that person feel as if they are completely involved with you 100%, then yes, they're going to start thinking other ideas and looking outside the box and considering other options. And you might not be that option. Yes, yes. Now, uh, speaking of wanting to go after Genevieve, uh, which he did not speak to Caroline about in time. Um, Gabe said in interviews that he knew the vote at final nine was going to be crucial and he needed to find someone to make into a target so everyone didn't focus on him. Genevieve obliged uh, by becoming a possibility due to the Saul vote, which Mm -hmm. is almost certainly why he pointed it out in the previous episode when he was Mm -hmm. like, oh, this is all her. This is all her. Yeah, this is all her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even then, he, he just wasn't able to pull it off. Yeah, well, I I do think that it was a great attempt for sure. And the fact that he could see this as being the option, right, Mm -hmm. where, oh, here's this idea that she wants to vote out Saul. This is going to be a big move. I want to highlight that as much as I can and give her as much credit as I can, because then that will help me target Mm -hmm. her next time. It's a lot of forward thinking, which I don't think we necessarily see that many players do. And the fact that he was able to do that and do it in such a way that, again, didn't seem like he was putting Genevieve in a bad spot. I mean, he was he was very proud of Genevieve to Genevieve's face. Like, oh, look what you did. Mm -hmm. You know, this is so great. And then she started to realize, oh, goodness, (laughs) (laughs) just shined a big light on myself, didn't I? Yeah. But but I do think that that is a great way to show a player that is thinking so many moves ahead and how someone else's move can benefit you as well because you can use it against them. Right. All right. Well, we could go to the second rule, which says not to scheme and plot too much and to keep your scheming secret. In some ways, Gabe did very well here, such as completely hiding his relationship with Sue from TK and Tiana, as we mentioned earlier. But in other ways, he drew way too much attention to himself, such as TK telling Dalton Ross that Gabe was playing erratically even back then. Mm -hmm. And, you know, different people caught him doing different things, such as talking to Caroline in the middle of the night, which we now know more about. Right. Uh, Even Kyle, who became a somewhat tight ally for much of the game, said in episode three that he thought Gabe was shifty and tried to get the tribe to turn on him. Uh, You'll recall that because I had in episode two in the podcast, I had called Gabe twitchy. And then, and uh, you, you and our guest uh, got a laugh out of that. And then the very next episode, Kyle called him shifty. And I was like, oh, I was so close. So close. Yes. Yeah, so close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You well, know, and, go ahead. Well, and I was just, I was just going to say that I think that Gabe probably struggled in this rule a little bit because I don't think that he was as aware of how he was being seen. Yes. By people, And I think that becomes very clear when he starts talking about him being a threat, like, mm-hmm. wait, but why? Why am I a threat? And so that would cause me to think he just doesn't understand that he's being perceived a particular way and he's being perceived that way because he's doing these things that in his mind, he's probably not thinking are a big deal. But when there's only a few people, when there's six people to start, everything that you're doing is really highlighted yep. because there's not very many people to focus on. So I, I do think that that's likely why this rule he struggled with, but 
good for him that he had Caroline and he had Sue in his mm-hmm. back pocket because it didn't do as much damage as it could have. Yeah. You know, and we already discussed in rule six that part of the reason he was such a threat was he was the leader of the remaining two. Right. Right. Um, but again, everyone knew he had those obvious tight bonds. You know, we talk about a tight duo being bad. This is a tw- tight quad. Um, right. You know, it made it even worse than, you know, people could look at it and say, oh, there are four people from that tribe. Okay. But, you know, that's fine until you realize they're all voting together and one guy and they're going to one guy for approval. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Now, one other thing I want to mention here is related to a discussion we had in the pregame uh, podcast. I'm not sure it fully fits in this rule, but I couldn't think of anywhere else to put it. Um, going way back. Yes. Back in his pregame interviews, he said his superpower was reading people. And he talked about body language and believing he could spot when someone was lying. Now, mm. I don't know for sure how much he tried to rely on this actually in the game. But we've talked about this before. It's, you know, this idea that you can read someone this well through their body languages. One of the most overused and incorrect ideas in all of reality TV. And almost nobody can actually do it with any level of accuracy. If he did follow through on that and was using it to tell him that certain people were still loyal, like Caroline and Kyle. Well, then he was counting on it too much. Uh, Mm -hmm. And, you know, just in general. He mentioned that he needed Saul to tell him that people were getting freaked out about how he was acting in tribal council. So clearly he wasn't able to read people in that aspect either. Yeah, but it's also tribal council. It's a hard place to necessarily read people. Yes. Unless they're talking. Right. All right. Well, we can move to the third rule, which tells players to be flexible. Um, How do you think Gabe did in terms of this rule? I think it's interesting because he didn't necessarily need to be right. He, he had his plan and it was actually working, which is fascinating because oftentimes we've talked about people come into the game with their ideas, but it doesn't always mesh with what they've been given. And he came in with the idea of, I want to align with an older person and that's going to be like my number one. And he Mm -hmm. got Sue like this and then he got Caroline. And so I think for Gabe, he really didn't need to be flexible because it was like everything worked out so well in the beginning with Tuku. And by the time they got to the merge, I think he was considering his options, but by then he thought he had so many paths to get to where he needed to go. So he would have been flexible if he needed to be. So I don't think that there was necessarily an issue, but I don't think we really had to see him needing to be flexible because things were just working out for him the way that he wanted them to. Well, yeah, till he got voted out. <laughs> well, right. There's, but when you're the other option, well, you yeah. know, what are you supposed um, to do? I mean, I do think he tried to play flexibly in terms of being willing to go with the flow sure. when it meant he could keep himself and his allies safe. You know, like mm-hmm. last week was a perfect example. He had nothing against Saul. He didn't right. want to target Saul. But if Genevieve wanted to gather the troops and get everyone pointed in that direction, great, go to it. Right. Um, and that benefited his game. Well, or did it? Well, he thought it did. Right. He thought it did. Right. I think he should have considered taking that flexibility in another direction. Mm. Kyle was available to be voted out last week. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't disagree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gabe knew the people were not happy about there being four tight tukers. Now, he may have considered Kyle something of a shield that he didn't want to give up yet. Mm -hmm. But what's the point of a shield? The point of a shield is they get hit instead of you. Right. But if you go back to what he's talking about with there being nine and then wanting Mm -hmm. to be eight, and he had, he did have an idea in his head, keeping Kyle was going to, or in his mind, I think could have benefited him because he does still have that shield there and he wanted to go in with four Tuku. So I'm not saying he's being flexible because he's going to, but he's working through the permutations of this, right? So if he's looking at what his options are, I can either vote out Kyle now and then lose a Tuku and then run the risk the next vote of being the target because now I'm down to two people voting with me. So that's only three and that's not four. Mm -hmm. And so obviously that has a little bit of of a different feel to it. And I still have Saul as an option and Genevieve as an option. But 
who are they looking at at that point? They're not really looking at Genevieve. They really started looking at Genevieve because of the solo, right? Right. right. So I, I think he, would he have considered it? Probably. He did say, I think, in one of his confessionals that at some point he's going to have to take Kyle out. But he understood the effect of that and that suddenly now he's going to be the focus of Tuku. So I understand entirely he had that option. But I think he thought his he was in such a good spot that it was working oh, for him. Yeah, I agree that he thought it. I just yeah. think that he could have sacrificed Kyle. This would have showed people that the Tukus were not as tight as people thought. Um, and then maybe people aren't thinking about him so much this time. You know, one reason kept coming up that there are four Tukus. There are four Tukus. Mm-hmm. If there were only three Tukus and the Tukus had turned on one of their own, yeah, not such a big threat anymore. And that's uh, fair. That is fair. You know, he could have, for example, made a deal with Genevieve. Okay, I know you want to get out Saul. How about you help me take out Kyle this time and we'll get Saul next time? And that could have worked. Yeah. You know, and that gets him past that crucial, you know, uh, final nine vote that he was so worried about. Mm hmm. Yeah. You've convinced me. Maybe that would have been a better play. Yeah. Um. So and I do know Rob brought up something similar on the know-it-alls, but I already had this written out before before the know-it-alls even recorded. So we're going to need to start um, checking your notes. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, Rob, I think Rob must have been. Rob found a way to get into my, uh, you know. <laughs> so. He's stealing from you. Yes. Me. All right, we can move on to the fourth rule, which tells players not to let their emotions control them. Uh, considering that I mentioned earlier he had a confessional about using people as tools, it's pretty clear he wasn't going to let his emotions interfere in the game. If he yeah. wanted someone gone, he was going to do what it took to make that happen, whether or not they were otherwise friendly. You know, just as Kyle and Caroline turned on him, he knew he would definitely have to turn on Kyle at some point and possibly even Caroline, depending on what happened. He was buddy buddy with Genevieve last week as she made the move against Saul and then perfectly happy to turn things on her this week. So overall, I would I would say he did you know a good job in following this rule. And I think he also played on other people's emotions, which yes. was certainly helpful to his game. One thing that he mentioned was in relationship to Tiana and how he really yes. like focused on what TK had been saying that like he called you a loser. Mm -hmm. Can you believe he said that about you? And it was very directed at Tiana when that really wasn't what TK was necessarily doing, but he knew that Tiana was upset. And he mm -hmm. knew if I just keep fueling this fire a little bit, then she'll end up voting for TK. And so I think that that is a great representation of using someone else's emotions to make them vote the way that you want. And it doesn't appear as if you're the one who's driving yep. the bus or the boat or whatever in that particular analogy that's being used at the time. But yeah. 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 I think we're at a boat at this point. It was a, a plane. Boat? Planes, trains, automobiles. Yeah, Rachel um, talked about a, a boat. I'm pretty sure it was a boat. Oh, well, she talked about the ocean and the, and the captain. So, yes. But she didn't want to be on the boat. She wanted to be right. the ocean. She's the ocean. Right. Yes. So whatever driving analogy we can come up with. That's right. I'm not the car. I'm the road. Um, and I will take you where you need to be. I don't know. Um, <laughs> we'll leave that to the next next tribal council or whatever. Was, I want that. that was real I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt for you. <laughs> Not the car on the road. I like that. <laughs> that was good. All right. Well the fifth rule reminds players they need to pretend to be nice and play the social game. How do you think Gabe did here? Well I think the fact that he had Sue so much in his pocket, he had to have been doing this very well. Uh, I do think that he likely struggled just a bit once they came to the merge because I, I mean, he sounded like he, he was talking about being goofy and having a good time with mm -hmm. everyone in the tribe. I don't know if he was necessarily connecting with everybody that same way, because I think people were a little bit leery, but I think overall he had to have had some type of a social game happening. If you're able to bring someone like Sue, as long as you have built on such a small amount of time and discussion 
and then also bring Caroline mm -hmm. along as well. And we've learned more about their relationship. So I think overall, I think he did fine. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that people probably enjoyed his presence in camp, at least, you know, according to the way he described it. Um, you know, but those friendships that he made did not necessarily turn into allies. I mean, Sue and Caroline, yes, but everybody else. Um, right. You know, he talked, for example, in an interview about how he and Sam shared a lot of interests and had a great time together. But there was the social aspect only and that ne they never yeah. came together in the game. He needed to find a way to make that happen, turn his socializing into social game. Yeah, well, and I think that this is something that you see very few survivors pull off well mm -hmm. because there there seems to be a great disconnect that, oh, just because you're nice to someone and getting along with someone doesn't necessarily mean that that person is playing the game with you. Right. It's a really big step when you can take it to the next level where like that person's really nice to me and I want to play the game mm -hmm. with them. And so I, you know, I think he probably wasn't able to make that next step because I uh, honestly, like it appeared as if he didn't necessarily need everybody. Right. He had right. such, I mean, this, this two coup four was, was so overwhelming for so many people that they were probably not interested in like, building that bond with Gabe. I know Sam's been like looking for people because he's like, I need people now. Mm -hmm. But as far as like your options, are you really going to go to Gabe as one of the options? Or are you going to go to someone like Teeny and be like, hey, do you need a friend? Because yeah. here I am. I need a friend too. Gabe didn't need friends. He had three other people with him. Yeah. Now, uh, I do want to say on the flip side, speaking of Teeny, Gabe talked about one thing that may have helped turn Teeny against him. Uh, mm. He mentioned to Mike Bloom that he accidentally rubbed Teeny the wrong way the morning yeah. after Saul was voted out. Uh, Teeny came to him knowing he lied to their face in tribal council and Teeny wanted to talk about it. But he just said, you know, we've moved on from it. Don't worry about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if Teeny had been the one who said that to him, Teeny was the offended party, not him. Right. So if Teeny had said it, it would be one thing. You know, he was the one who had done the line. But him saying it was obviously not what Teeny wanted to hear from him. It mm -hmm. sounded very dismissive. And he now realizes it was, in his own words, kind of an F you. Yes. Um, now, another thing that probably wasn't the main reason he was voted out, but sure didn't help matters. Yes. And I and the thing about Teeny is, and Teeny has said this a lot. <laughs> that she's a very emotional player. And so I think as far as Teeny is concerned and what what they needed for the game was much different than necessarily what Gabe was right. was realizing at that time. So it probably had much more of an effect on Teeny at that point because of how they were playing the game. Yeah. All right, uh, continuing along here. The seventh rule covers idols and advantages in game mechanics. Now, I mentioned uh, back in rule one how Gabe used his immunity idol to cement an early alliance with Caroline. Mm. Lots of commentators have talked about doing something like this with an idol. Uh, but he was actually successful. It, you know, it, Caroline was questioning him, and he turned her into a strong ally for most of the game. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely correct about that. So now, of course, he then used that idol to protect himself in case of a rock draw. Um, now, many of us at the time suspected that's why he played it. And he confirmed it in interviews, mm -hmm. also noting that it might help prevent a rock draw from changing the odds. If Tiana, you know, had voted for a tie. Mm. It would have meant, hey, if you stay as a tie, you have a 33% chance of getting knocked out. Yeah, I thought that was really fascinating that it was actually like a mathematical equation that mm -hmm. helped him make that decision. So, yeah. yeah, that was that was don't do a rock draw. Just don't do it. That's my <laughs> suggestion to all. They of haven't. You. you have scared everybody away from them. So good. Keep yeah. being scared. <laughs> Be afraid. All right. Well, Appendix A is next, and it's about the players keeping their end goals in mind when voting. And we talk about voting out the weak, then the strong, and the weak, and the strong. At this point in the game, they should still be voting out strong threats. 
as was discussed in tribal council this week. It was, wasn't That was yeah. fascinating. I thought of you when that happened. Oh yes. Yes. Uh, a number of people did. Thank you to everybody who, who <laughs> thought of me, who, who mentioned it online. Um, and they even talked about something I said last week on the podcast, which is there are so many different ways a player can be strong. Mm -hmm. You can have strong connections. You can be strong in challenges. You can be a strong social player. Um, I, I feel like Rachel was speaking to this appendix when she said in tribal council that if they were voting out the week now, Sierra and Saul wouldn't be in the jury already. Right. Yeah. yeah. And with the way Saul looked, the word strong definitely came to mind. Oh, my God. You commented on his biceps. Yes, I did. <laughs> I they did. Were some, they were some nice looking biceps. Yes. Um, and he had the perfect sheen, too. You know, the one that you like, like when uh, was it James oiled up? Uh, oh, you know, don't previously, started uh, you know, he, you know, Saul, Saul didn't oil up, but he had the rain coming Come down. On. So. James is a specimen. Yes. I mean, that he's just so unbelievably strong, just ridiculous. Just mm -hmm. there are very few people that you watch Survivor and you're like, oh, that person can literally do everything. And yeah. he could. So except play an yeah. idol, maybe. Um, Two. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Sorry about that little yeah. reminder. Anyway, we 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 will go back. I'm sure he's day. listening. I'm sure he's listening right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. Absolutely. <laughs> um. But anyway, getting back to tribal council, it went back to evaluating who the strongest threat was for each individual player. Mm. And, you know, we, of course, began the rules by looking at the reasons Gabe was a threat overall. But there were some other specifics. Caroline was truly doing what, you know, what, what this rule says, uh, you know, looking ahead to the end game, making, mm -hmm. you know, keeping in mind that end game goal yeah. um as gabe talked to her about them realizing their day three dream and making it to final three together with sue she realized that his track record to this point was better than hers so if she got rid of him now she could emerge and really start right. her game and I really hope that if she does make the final three that she remembers to mm -hmm. highlight that component that yes. like I had to do this for myself, Gabe, because you were going to beat me if you were sitting here. It's mm -hmm. always nice when you make the people sitting in the jury yep. feel better about themselves. And so I really hope if she's in the final three, that's what she does. Yeah. Now, Kyle did it mostly because he felt Gabe would come after him if he didn't get Gabe first, which I don't think is necessarily a good reason because uh, newsflash, Kyle, everyone is probably coming after Kyle if he doesn't win immunity. Yes. Um, you know, they let him through once and then he won the very next time after that. Right. Uh, but at least he was trying to find a way out of his predicament. Sure. Yeah. But I think Kyle's going to be in a tough spot. Yes. Yes. Uh, meanwhile, on the flip side, Teeny had good reasons, both personal and strategic, for wanting to get Genevieve out. But they were willing to put that aside because now was the time to get out Gabe instead. There were people lined up to do it. He was a bigger threat. And when you have a chance to take a shot like that, you have to take it. Yes. And you also don't rock the boat when you right. go along with it. Right. So if everyone is saying we should probably do this and you have a different idea, if you start really pushing for mm -hmm. your idea instead, well, then people might start looking at you. So I, I think certainly in anyone's best interest. If there is a name that seems to be the consensus, mm -hmm. put your feelings aside for a minute and say, we can come back to that later. Right. Yeah. Right. All right. Well, Appendix B discusses the jury phase, including preparing yourself for uh, being at the end and also preparing the jury to want to vote for you. Um, Gabe talked in tribal council about how players were thinking uh, of who they wanted to sit next to at the end. And, well, clearly he was not the one they wanted next to him. Uh, right. We've already discussed how he was viewed in terms of his tribal council discussions. Plus, I just mentioned how Caroline felt his track record lined up compared to hers. And I think the same would be true of several other people if they compared themselves uh, to him. Mm -hmm. So 
I think Gabe was doing a pretty good job of setting himself up to be seen as a kind of mastermind if he made it to the end. But the problem was the people saw he was setting himself up to look mm -hmm. like a mastermind if he made it to the end. And that contributed to his threat level. Yes. The only one who didn't was Sue. Yes. Yes. And she might have thought it, but it didn't matter because she was loyal to him. So Right. Very true. All right. Well, it is about time then to wrap things up. Um, what are your final thoughts on Gabe? I am pleasantly surprised with Gabe. I really am. Like, I, I don't remember exactly my initial thoughts about him. I do believe there's a podcast somewhere where I talk about him. But I just... I think that Gabe ended up coming out of the, like, out of the box a little bit strong. Like, I know at the beginning there was some concern that he was a little sporadic and, mm -hmm. and might have been playing a little too much too fast. But I think he did a really great job in realizing who he was playing this game with and realizing what their weaknesses were to further his own game in the process and that's something that I think really needs to be highlighted about Gabe is his ability to do just that, because it's something that I don't think we see very many players do where they focus on, well, what is important to that person and how can I make that person's move affect me, but benefit my game in the long run, mm -hmm. which I think we saw him do multiple times with multiple players. So very impressive in that regard. But unfortunately, he just kept making himself look more and more like a strategic player by doing it because people were starting to look around and going, well, wow, look at all of these things that are happening and look at Tuku and look at where we're at and who seems to be the center of all of this. And that's Gabe. And so he was just rising that threat level without even realizing he was doing it because what he thought he was doing was so like sneaky and underhanded and like behind the scenes, no one's going to pick up on this. But they eventually did and said, oh, my gosh, this is all Gabe and we need to send Gabe home. And so I think his ideas to play this game were great. His attempts to do so were the same. But unfortunately, he really did put himself in a situation where everybody was looking at Gabe. And when they had a chance to take him out, they did. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Gabe knew the final nine was a crucial point for him. While he tried to take steps to get people to focus elsewhere, the problem was he had done so much previously to make them focus on him. Mm. Everyone knew he was the leader of the Tukus. Everyone knew he was a good speaker at Tribal Council and could think deeply about the strategy and philosophy of the game. Everyone knew he was well-liked at camp. In fact, everything that everyone knew about him made him a bigger and bigger threat. But I talked earlier about how it's almost never that simple, and that's still the case. It's not just that he was a huge threat. It was all the actions he took to cause it and didn't take to address it. Knowing the final nine was so important to his game, he needed to have a better plan than just hoping he could push the target off onto someone else. If mm. Kyle hadn't won immunity and Genevieve hadn't made her obvious move, he had planned to probably push Kyle forward as the target. But that was something he should have done in the previous vote when Kyle was vulnerable rather than hoping it would happen again. He would have reduced the overall threat level of the two coups and therefore his own as well. He could have turned the focus to someone else this time, but instead he remained as such a big threat that even one of his closest allies, Caroline, not only didn't save him, but turned on him. Mm. Even beyond that, just because someone is a smart player doesn't mean they have to show how smart they are. Gabe seemingly did a good job of hiding his full self around camp. But as he said in interviews, a, a, a switch just flipped when he got to tribal council. He didn't even recognize it himself. He had to be told. We've talked before about how all of Tribal Council is theater, but he became the star of the show. The thing is, nobody wanted to be his understudy at the end of the game. Like Andy said, they wanted to defeat the big threats now, before final Tribal Council. 
you don't wait to the end. You take them out when you can. Gabe allowed himself to be seen as that kind of end game threat. And he didn't have the allies that he thought he had surrounding himself to protect him. And that is why Gabe lost. Mm. There we are. There we are. So, all right. Well, uh, before we move on to uh, a couple things, including our predictions, which you don't want to miss because they are always right on the money, um, <laughs> or at least funny. Uh, very very yeah. funny. Very yes. funny. I want to uh, quickly remind everyone the rules we just discussed are available in poster form mm -hmm. and in T-shirt form or the poster on a T-shirt and in checklist form on a T-shirt. Right. So again, go to uh, robhaswebsite.com slash yxlostfeed for that. And you should definitely check us out on social media. I am at JessicaLewis89 on both Twitter and Blue Sky. Uh, I'm still warming up to this whole Blue Sky thing, so be patient with me, but I'll get there. And then I'm also at JessicaLewis6789 on Instagram, but I am certainly not the social media guru of the guy sitting next to me, David Bloomberg, who has so many social media sites and really was the star of Blue Sky as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> He's been selling everyone on Blue Sky forever. And it took, you know, some current events to make people really go to Blue Sky. But David was there a long time ago. So, David, where can they find you besides Blue Sky? Well, they or, can find including me, Blue Sky. Including Blue Sky. Yes, I'm all over the place. Uh, um, you know, first of all, uh, you can find everything of mine uh, at Linktree slash David Bloomberg with a dot before the EE. Uh, or you could find me more directly. Now, if you look at my Linktree, I said last time, I said, ooh, I have to switch things around. And I did. Blue Sky is now uh, right near the top and Twitter is uh, dropped, uh, uh, you know, much Way lower down, down there. there. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, you could find me directly on Blue Sky and also Twitter as at David Bloomberg. Uh, on Threads is at David Bloomberg TV. Uh, you know, as you know, we've been talking about a lot of people moving to Blue Sky. I encourage it. Um, if you're an RHAP patron, there's a whole list of patrons that you can kind of subscribe to and follow everyone or follow select people. Um, you can do the same with the all the RHAP podcasters. You could do the same with survivor players who are on there. Uh, so it's easy to suddenly find all the people that you want to have conversations with. Mm, that's um, lovely. And there's even like an RHAP feed and a survivor feed. Uh, you can do that as well. So you can really modify it to do whatever you want to do on Blue Sky. Um, this is a Blue Sky commercial again. Yeah, another one. Yes. Um, now, I'm also, of course, on the video platforms, YouTube, TikTok and Instagram as at David Bloomberg TV, uh, still posting two or three or sometimes more videos per day. Uh, you know, come on over and uh, join the fun on YouTube, um, especially YouTube, because like it, it's it's so interesting. You know, I posted that Saul video on TikTok and boom, shut up. I posted mm -hmm. it on YouTube and it's like, meh. I'm like, really? Do YouTube, uh, what are you YouTube people not looking, not seeing here? That was, you know, a fun video that I posted well, there. And too. you know what? There's just so many social media options. People are overwhelmed. I know. Maybe. I know. I know. Um, but in addition to, uh, you know, stuff from Survivor, I'm also posting from the Traders Canada, the Summit, and House of Villains. Um, in addition, uh, speaking of the Traders Canada, I am co-hosting the Trade Hour podcast for the Traders Canada season two. Excellent. Look at you. Mm -hmm. um, now, it's time for predictions. So I guess I should mm, uh, do is. that there. Um, it is. The preview tells us Kyle doesn't trust anybody and knows that as a family man, he's a dangerous person to have at the end. Sue uh, doesn't want to hear any of that. Yeah, no kidding. Sam thinks Rachel has something up her sleeve, which she does. Um, <laughs> and there's an underdog alliance of Sue, Caroline, Teeny, Rachel, and Andy. Mm -hmm. Whether it's real or not is another matter. But, you know, they at least uh, seem to all, you know, agree on this. Um, and Andy feels like he's in a crushing position in the game. So what, what does that all tell us? As usual, not much. 
Right. I'm a little worried about Andy because of the part about him thinking he's in such a great spot. But I just don't see things turning on him that quickly. Mm, I agree. Um, so Kyle talked this week about how if Gabe went, he'd be the next obvious target. Uh, but we also know there was a discussion about whether Genevieve should go instead, uh, meaning her name is definitely still in the mix. Mm. And, you know, she was somewhat lucky to make it past this one. If Kyle wins immunity again, I think Genevieve could be in trouble. Uh, if he doesn't, he could be in really big trouble. It's hard to bet against Kyle winning immunity. Um, so I'm going to say he does it again. And Genevieve pays the price for her move against Saul. Oh, interesting. Because I was going to say Genevieve as well, but not because Kyle was safe. I think Teeny, she's looking for some retribution, right? Is mm. that retribution? What is what was yes. what were Teeny's words? She was going to avenge Saul, right? Everything I do from this point out. Yes, something like that. Yeah. And so I feel like Teeny's focus is going to be that where this past week, Teeny said, Okay, I'll go along with everyone. I'll vote out Gabe. That's fine. We are going to be revisiting Genevieve mm -hmm. when we can. So regardless of what happens with Kyle, I think Teeny's going to go to Kyle and say, listen, we need to come together now on this one. I need Genevieve gone. And I think Kyle is going to say, absolutely. Regardless Great of idea. Yes. Right. So I think it will be Genevieve regardless of what happens to Kyle or with Kyle regarding okay. immunity. Okay. All right. Well, we're still on the same page, whether it happens mm -hmm. or not. So, right. All right. Well, as we wrap up, I want to encourage people to check out the RJP patron program at Rob has website.com slash patron. Uh, you get access to all the special podcasts that are put out just for patrons discounts to the, to the live shows, uh, Facebook groups, discord, and as I mentioned, you can be put on a list on uh, Blue Sky. Uh, yes, you can. And also, you can support shows like ours and everything on the network by becoming a patron at robhiswebsite.com slash patron. Also, make sure you're subscribed to all the RHAP Survivor podcasts by going to weknowsurvivor.com uh, and selecting your podcast service of choice. You'll find a, gr a, a, a ton of great Survivor content, like, of course, us, uh, the Know-It-Alls, the B&B, &B, Survivor International, uh, et cetera. Uh, so, you know, again, head to WeKnowSurvivor.com. Yes, and we would like to thank everyone at RHAP for not only this podcast making it possible for us, as you just said, but also for all of the incredible content that you have available to you on RHAP. So thank you, Scott St. Pierre and Jessica Sterling for the editing and producing that you do provide. We appreciate the staff and team for all of the work that you do. And thank you, Doug, for the cover art that is provided for the Survivor podcast. So thank you for that. And Will from America, the song that does play mm -hmm. prior to just the listening portion as opposed to the video portion of this podcast. So thank you yes. for that. We really appreciate it. And, and David Bloomberg. It's been lovely. It's been a lovely yes. time. Yes. Even though you felt it necessary to bring up a very painful memory of mine. Oh, I thought you were going to say to start talking about balls. Your ball? Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you're presenting on video. Yes. Um, yes. Thank you, as always, Jessica, for another great week. Uh, even having to bring up, you know, and go through those those memories. Painful. Um, Painful, painful, memories. painful memories that I might put out for the world to see again. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone, next week is Thanksgiving. So yes. our podcast release will be postponed for a couple days. Uh, I would say look for it Sunday night or early Monday morning. Um, in the meantime, uh, for all of those who celebrate Thanksgiving, uh, mm -hmm. you know, have have a good one. Um, and. We will see everyone then. Until then, remember, hopefully your balls don't go off in different directions because that makes it more difficult. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>